Hello my dear student I am professor Devashish Bose head department of criminology and forensic science Dr Hari Singh Gaur Vishwavidyalaya Sagar Madhya Pradesh Today I am going to present a lecture of BSc first semester on the unit police and detective training which has been jointly prepared by myself and Ms Neha Sharma a PhD scholar and a UGC JRF at department of criminology and forensic science Dr Hari Singh Gaur Vishwavidyalaya Sagar Madhya Pradesh So let's start our discussion while taking a look at what we are going to learn today. Today's lecture module 1 will be our introduction, module 2 objectives of training school, module 3 hierarchy of police personnel and detectives, module 4 training courses, module 5 description of police and detective training schools and finally module 6 will be our conclusion. My dear student police always fascinates us so police are the one of the most ever present organization of the society the policemen are visible representative of the government in an hour of need danger crisis and difficulty when a citizen does not know what to do and whom to approach the police station and a policeman happens to be the most appropriate and approachable unit and person for him The police is expected to be the most accessible, interactive and dynamic organization of any society. The police is expected to play flawless role in the society by maintaining law and order. Police personnel uphold and enforce the law impartially and to protect life, liberty, property, human right and dignity of the members of the public and society. they promote and preserve public order as well as protect internal security to prevent and control terrorist activity militant activities naxalism and other situations affecting the internal security of a country they also protect public properties including roads railways bridges vital installation and establishments etc against acts of vandalism violence or any kind of attack So my dear student in the same way different intelligence and detective agencies are also working in our country their agents are working in the society by just mixing with us with the normal people their main objective of any intelligence agency is to collect intelligence and information via espionage psychological warfare subversion sabotage and assassination before understanding functions and training we should be familiar about the criminal justice system the process of criminal justice system has the following step step 1 is registration of the first information report that is fir the process of criminal justice system is initiated with the registration of the first information report The FIR is a written document prepared by the police when they receive information about the commission of a cognizable offence. Step 2. The police officer proceeds to the scene of crime and investigates the facts of the case. FIR is the report of the information that reaches the police first in point of time and that is why it is called the first information report. I think the first information report is clear to you my dear student. Police investigation mainly includes in cognizable offence the police has a direct responsibility to undertake investigation and the power to arrest a person without a warrant in case of non cognizable offences that means those offences which are not serious cannot be instigated by the police on their own unless directed by the court having jurisdiction to do so police personnel carried out the following duties examination of the scene of crime examination of the witness and the suspect recording of statements conducting search seizures of property collecting evidences of scientific importance consulting records and making entries in the prescribed records like case diary daily diary station diary etc making arrest and detention interrogation of the accused step 3 After completion of investigation the officer in charge of the police station sends a report to the area magistrate the report sent by the investigating officer is in the form of a charge sheet if there is sufficient evidence to prosecute the accused or not such a report is called the final report 
Step 4. On receiving the charge sheet, the court takes cognizance and initiate the trial of that particular case. Step 5. The charges are framed. The procedure requires the prosecution to prove the charge against the accused beyond a shadow of doubt. The accused is given a full opportunity to defend himself or herself. If the trial ends in a conviction, the court may award any of the following punishments. It could be a simple fine or forfeiture of property or simple imprisonment, maybe a rigorous imprisonment or it could be an imprisonment for life or the worst case, it could be a death sentence or a capital punishment. With this, we come to the end of module 1. As we know, police and detectives always work for the welfare of society and country. These all qualities are developed in them by the training school. Training school function by keeping following objectives to ensure that everyone in the school is trained, to guide the human resource to realize its full potential and to ensure full commitment towards achievement of the goals and objective of that particular organization. To sensitize the human resource of government to respond to the dynamic socio-legal environment of the country, to strive after quality, standardization and constant improvement in the technique and skills of report writing, investigation, prosecution and supervision of cases. To remotivate the police personnel to discharge their duties professionally, to develop a sound research base in training for new vistas of investigation, to broad base the training efforts of school with inter-institutional and international cooperation, to ensure optimal utilization of training resource through a cost-conscious culture. So these all are the features which are incorporated. My dear student, you all went to the school, even I went to the school, every one of us. For what? For getting a training. We go to preschool, we go to primary school, we go to middle school, we go to high school, we go to inter-college. Now we are into college or university. It's a training process. Likewise, every institution, every person is trained. Suppose you went for a job, they will be sending you to a training. Likewise, in police organizations also or detective agencies also they formulate their own training program to basically to groom with this we come to the end of module 2 in police organization director general of police dgp mainly the in charge of the state police force Next is Additional Director of Police, Additional DGP, Inspector General of Police, IG, in charge of a zone which comprises of few range, Deputy Inspector General of Police or DIG, in charge of a range which comprises of group of district, Senior Superintendent of Police or SSP, in charge of a bigger district, Superintendent of Police, SP, normally the in charge of district, additional superintendent of police or additional SP or assistant or deputy superintendent of police, ASP or DYSP is in charge of a subdivision in the district. Inspector of police is in charge of a police station. Sub-inspector of police or commonly known as SI in charge of a smaller police station. Assistant Sub-Inspector of Police or ASI is one of the staff at a police station. Constable or Head Constable, he is one of the staff at the police station. Police Constable, staff again a staff of the police station. He is the lowermost officer in the police organization. Now we come to Intelligence Organization. He is a Director Intelligence Bureau, a four-star ranking officer. That is a post held by a senior most IPS officer. Special director, equivalent to director general of police. Additional director, he is equivalent to additional director general of police. Joint director, equivalent to inspector general of police. Deputy director, 
equivalent to deputy inspector general of police joint deputy director equivalent to senior superintendent of police assistant director equivalent to superintendent of police deputy central intelligence officer equivalent to additional superintendent of police assistant central intelligence officer 1 equivalent to deputy superintendent of police assistant central intelligence officer 2 equivalent to inspector of police junior intelligence officer equivalent to sub inspector sergeant constable these are the hierarchical position of the training institute for your convenience or the intelligence institute for your convenience my dear student we have matched with the police because we are more commonly versed with the police designations so what is the parallel designations which are at par with the police in the investigating agencies or these kind of uh, investigating institutes with this we come to the end of module 3most of the states in our country have their own police training college or academies that impart training directly to recruited sub inspectors and deputy superintendent of police and training schools for the training of constabulary apart from the most central police organization have established their own training institutes which organizes not only basic training for their officers but also specialized courses for them and for others there are five central detective training schools under the Bureau of Police Research and Development, which organizes special courses to train investigating officers in advanced scientific methods of investigating crime. The National Institute of Criminology and Forensic Science, named as Lok Nayak Jay Prakash Narayan, NICFS. Uh, under the Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India runs training course not only for police and forensic science personnel, but also for officers from other agencies of the criminal justice system. Four type of training courses are being organized by police training institution. They include basic induction level course for fresh recruits, pre-promotion in-service course for those about to be promoted, refresher course and specialized course basic training course for police personnel constables it's the duration of nine months subject thoughts are police organization and administration law crime prevention maintenance of law and order code of conduct and behavior police public relation plus outdoor training like basic physical training drill weapon and explosive training field craft and tactics first aid riot control unarmed combat for sub inspectors and deputy superintendent of police the training of direct recruited sub inspectors and deputy superintendent of police is conducted at the police training college of the respective states the duration is slightly long it's of 12th months subject thoughts are modern india and the role of police organization and administration leadership and supervision human behaviors police attitude police image Police and Public Relation, Law, Criminology, Police Science. Outdoor training includes physical training, drill, weapon training, crowd control, maintenance and mechanism of automobiles and driving, field craft and tactics, unarmed combat. For Deputy Superintendent of Police, the basic subjects remains the same with additional focus on developing quality of management and leadership as well as weapon training in a part of the police training courses. So up to this, these are the state level courses. It may vary from state to state. The duration, the courses may vary, but basically it's almost the same, maybe slightly here or slightly there. Now we talk about IPS officer. Officers recruited to the IPS, that is Indian Police Service, firstly they have to complete their foundation training course with other All India Service Officer at Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administrator at Missouri in Uttar Pradesh. After that, they are trained in the National Police Academy at Hyderabad.
The purpose of the foundation training course is to provide an understanding of the constitutional, economic and social framework within which the all India service officers are required to function and to give them an idea of the basic principle of administration, functioning of the government, machinery etc. This is followed by a basic training course of 44 weeks after which they are attached to some organization. They came back to the academy for a second phase of two weeks training after completing their field attachment and district training. Pre-promotion courses in the case of lower ranks, successfully completing prescribed training course is mandatory to get a promotion to the next rank. Training courses conducted for this purpose are called pre-promotion courses. Refresher courses beside the above refresher course are also conducted at periodic interval to sharpen the professional skill of the police personnel and bring about the required changes in their attitude. A specialized training course. Specialized training courses are also conducted on different subjects. These are organized by both the police and other training institute. Since the focus of the Indian Police Service is to train officers to the sound administrator and managers institute that specialize in management, public administration and behavioral sciences are often used for the purpose of imparting specialized training. Some of the subjects covered by the specialized training courses includes advanced techniques of scientific investigation, VIP security, dealing with problems of insurgency and terrorism, horse riding, detection and disposal of bombs and explosives, computer application, management and public administration, forensic science, vigilance and anti-corruption, Dealing with special crime like those against women and children, drugs, narcotics, training of trainers, human rights, radio wireless, traffic, commando training, intelligence, rock climbing and mountaineering, cyber crimes, field craft, tactic training course detective. With this, we come to the end of the normal training of the police officers. I think I have motivated you to join the police forces. Now I'm going to motivate you to join the Detective Institutes of India. Training course for detectives. Training is completed in two terms. First one is a basic training while other one is the advanced training. So let's start with the basic training. Basic training, the main motto of the basic training is to make familiar the recruit with the real world of intelligence and espionage, which is totally different from the spies of fiction or the movies. Basic training starts with pep talk to boost the moral of the new recruits, which is a 10 day phase. Common uses, tradecraft techniques and classification of information are taught here. Financial and economic analysis, space technology, information security, energy security and scientific knowledge are also given to the trainee. The recruit is made to specialize in a foreign language introduced to geostrategic analysis. During basic training, different case studies of other agencies like CIA, KGB, ISI, Mossad and Secret Intelligence Service are presented to study. The trainee is also taught the intelligence organization do not identify who is friend and who is not. The country's foreign policy does. A multidisciplinary school of economic intelligence is also been set up in Mumbai to train intelligent officers in investigating economic crimes like money laundering for terror purposes etc. Advanced training. So be careful and listen to this. Advanced training. Basic training, the recruits are attached to the Field Intelligence Bureau, FIB. In advanced training, candidate is trained to work in unfavorable climate condition like extreme cold, during night exercise under realistic conditions. Personnel are taught infiltration, exfiltration. Personnel learn the art of survey, making contacts and the numerous skill of operating an intelligence mission. At the end of the field training, the new recruit is brought back to the school for final polishing. As an intelligence service, self-defense is very important. Therefore, before the deployment in the field, he or she is given exhaustive training in the art of self-defense and the use of technical spinach devices. The personnel are also drilled in various administrative disciplines. 
So my dear students, I think I am not scaring you away from the detective services. You will say, no, 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 we are not going to join. The police service is better. So with this, we come to the end of this interesting module 4. And now we move on to our next module, that is module 5. A police academy is a training school for new police recruits, also known as a law enforcement academy. Some are known as colleges or universities. They all have various background checks, examination, physical requirements, medical requirements, legal training, driving skills, equipment training and firearm training for new police recruits. The academy prepares the recruit for the police force they will be assigned to when they are graduate. So my dear student, I just want to tell you here about the Sardar Vallabhai Patel National Police Academy. Sardar Vallabhai Patel National Police Academy is the Indian National Institute for Training of Indian Police Service IPS officers before they are being sent to their respective state cadres to carry out their duties. The academy is in Hyderabad. The primary purpose of this academy is to prepare leaders for the Indian police force who will lead or command the force with courage, uprightness, dedication and a strong sense of serve the people. Academy trained terms the value and norms as would help them serve the people better. It improves them integrity of the highest order, sensitivity to aspiration of people in a fast changing social and economic world, respect for human rights, broad liberal perspective of law and justice, high standards of professionalism, physical fitness and mental alertness. The academy will be a focal point for training of the trainers of the police training institutes all over the country and will provide consultancy services to the sister training institutes for improving their management of training. In the country, for the training of detectives and intelligence, many detective training schools are there. From those schools, I am going to discuss here the Central Detective Training School, Kolkata. The Central Detective Training School Kolkata, commonly known as CDTS Kolkata, is located in, at the CFSL, Central Forensic Science Laboratory building at Kolkata, along with two other units. The Central Forensic Science Laboratory and the Central Fingerprint Bureau. It is a premier detective training school in India, which imparts training mainly on the scientific aspects of crime cases, investigation and other police related subjects. This institute is the oldest of the five central detective training schools located at Kolkata, Chandigarh, Hyderabad, Ghaziabad and Jaipur. Each CDTS is headed by a principal who is an IPS officer. The principal is assisted by one vice principal and other faculty members of the rank of deputy superintendent of police and inspectors imparting training to the participants. Beside the in-house faculty members, experienced senior police officer belonging to the rank of DG, IG, DIG, SP and eminent judges, doctors, academicians, forensic experts, professors etc. are being invited by the CDTS to deliver lecture and their expert opinion on different topics of the respected field. We know that practical is also much more important than theory. In this academy, trainees get an excellent facility to enrich their knowledge by doing practical of various forensic subjects and other related subjects connected with the day-to-day -day police work. Forensic subjects include practical training of footprint, fingerprint, handling, labeling and packing etc. The trainee officers get an opportunity to have practical and theoretical knowledge on physical ballistic and chemical analysis of biological matter like blood, semen, hair, fiber, dust, other objects of forensic importance, different type of forged documents and counterfeiting notes, documents etc. from government examiner of question document and CFSL. With this, I come to the end of this interesting module number 6. Police and detective agencies play a crucial role to maintain peace in the society and country.
Personnel of police and intelligence work 24 into 7 for the welfare of society and think the whole nation as their family and serve the nation. While at time their own family also needs their presence, but they always give preference to the nation. Sometimes they have to hide their personal identity and they did it without any hesitation or hindrance because they always work for the maintenance of law and order in the country. But have you ever thought who develops this attitude within themselves? This is the training school who transforms a normal person like you and me into a dignified and responsible attitude who serves whole life for the country. At last, I just want to salute all those police and intelligent personnel from the bottom of my heart who is serving this nation above their family. Thank you.